Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how I paint a loose line and wash painting of a windmill in the evening light. I'm starting off by sketching very roughly um, where I want my horizon line and then my windmill itself. Um, keeping it nice and loose, I'm not going to put too much detail in, um, I'm not going to worry about it looking exact or with the lines really straight. This is an old rustic building so I'm going to be just focusing on trying to um, keep that sort of character to my line work. But first of all, with the pencil drawing, um, I'm trying to get everything mapped out in the right place. If I make any mistakes, I can use an eraser and adjust the lines of my windmill until I get it looking how I want it to look. I'm using a, a sheet or a quarter imperial sheet um, of Saunders Waterford cold press paper. Um, the size is about, I think it's 11 inches high by 15 inches or um, in metric that's 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. I've got it taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. Um, this will help to keep the paper secure on my board. My paper isn't stretched, I don't pre-stretch. What happens is, um, as I paint wet into wet, the paper will buckle. This is quite a lightweight paper, this one's only £90, so it will buckle. But because it's taped in place, um, that sort of works to stretch it. So as it shrinks and dries, it flattens out. When I draw in the sails of my windmill, I'm making sure, if I can, that I get them nice and square. Time to add some ink. I'm going to start off using um, a Sharpie, a permanent marker Sharpie, um, to get some nice thick bold lines to delineate my sails to start with. Make sure all the pens you use for this sort of thing are waterproof. Um, if you don't have waterproof pens, you can just put your washes in first and then go in afterwards when the painting's dry um, with your non-waterproof ink. Now I've moved on to my Faber Castell Artist Pit Pen Fine Liner and it, this is size medium. They're filled with Indian ink, they're waterproof and they're lovely pens to use. You can get really nice line work done with them. So I'm now just going over my pencil lines. I don't mind if my lines um, skip a bit or hit and miss or, or if they're a bit wobbly. Um, in fact, I'm kind of trying for that really um, because that adds to the old sort of run down rustic nature of the building that I'm trying to um, conjure up here. I want to have the windows shining um, shining out into the evening gloom. That's my sort of idea for this painting. So I'm drawing in my panes, window panes, multiple panes in each of these two windows fairly carefully um, so that they're defined and I've got those nice light areas because I'm going to use masking fluid once I've finished the line work and before I do my wash and that will keep the window panes nice and white so that I can then go in and add a sort of yellow glow to them as if they were sort of the, the, the lights were on inside the mill. I'm hoping that will give me a nice simple focal point.
with a line and wash painting, um, we're thinking in terms of three main tones. Um, so it's a bit different from that point of view to um, watercolour painting. We're working from our darkest darks first, um, which is the ink work. This is our darkest dark, so I'm putting in some shadows now um, so that I can really get this mill standing out beautifully. Um, and then the unpainted paper or anything that we mask out is our lightest light, but the paint will give us all of our mid-tones, nice and simply. Just putting in just a hint of a sort of ground level. And now it's time to mask out my windows. I've got a small detail brush, which I've, um, I have wet it and then rubbed soap into the hairs. And this will preserve the brush from being damaged by the latex masking fluid, which if you're not careful, it can ruin your brush. So don't use your best brushes for this. So I've dipped it into my masking fluid and I'm carefully painting over my window pane areas. And once I've masked out my windows, then I have to leave that to dry completely before I can start painting. If I go in and try to paint while the masking fluid is still wet, then I'll run the risk of lifting it. And it's always best to check your mas masking fluid on your paper. Sometimes when you try to remove it, um, it can tear on cheaper papers. So please test a little scrap first because it would be awful to you know, get halfway through your painting and then to discover that your paper doesn't like masking fluid. Now I'm going to put on a wash of indigo, burnt umber and Prussian blue. So I'm going to wet my page all over. My board is at an angle of 45 degrees, so gravity will help me to paint the painting. So these are my tube consistency Cotman student colours um, and I'm getting plenty of paint onto my brush so that I can apply it liberally and get some interesting effects in my graduated wash and um, get some lights and darks, some shadows and um, some nice variation. There is a full real-time tutorial of this over on Patreon. Um, so follow the link below if you think this may be for you and maybe consider joining us. Um, but after, I'd say after the first of the month, because if you join now, you'll be charged when you join and then charged again on, I think is it Sunday is the 1st of August, I think I'm losing track. So probably best to wait till the first of the month, then you get a full membership for your $4 fee. There will also be reference photo photos. Um, there's the, be, there'll be a copy of the line work for you to refer to as well um, and download, um, copy or trace, that sort of thing. This is my large Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush. It's very useful for quickly spreading the washes around on the page. Just want a sort of a hint of a distant hill or tree line at the background, in the background. I'm working quite quickly while the page is still wet so that everything just softens and diffuses as it dries. Now I'm mixing up an inky consistency of the three colours and I'm going to spatter in some of that just to add some texture in my foreground. And then I'll do the same with some clean water to create some deliberate uh, runbacks or blooms, again, to add texture to this sort of semi-abstract foreground. Yeah. 
Now I think that's nearly there. Um, I'm going to take the corner of my plastic store card and scrape through the wet paint, the thick wet paint, to give myself um, some sort of, um, either a sort of faint suggestion of a pathway or just maybe the sort of, you know, some sort of uh, the lay of the land. Um, something and nothing really which is often what happens when you paint loose foregrounds where you don't want too much detail. Now I'm going back in with some darker paint, just um, touching the tips of the brush around the marks that I made. Some will be filled in, some will be left. Um, again, it's going to be texture and tone in the foreground. Um, again, something and nothing adding a few more touches here and there around the base of the, of the windmill. Just the impression of maybe some more sort of bushes and shrubbery, but without having to go into too much detail. And then finally, when the foreground paint is almost dry, when the sheen has gone off it, but it's still damp, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of ordinary, finely ground table salt across the foreground. Um, if I've got the timing right, then it should cause a sort of a resist and push the paint away from each grain of salt and give me the effect of some tiny little flower speckles. And that should just be the finishing touch that I need for the foreground. Now I need to leave it to dry completely. It's now completely dry and it's a little bit brighter and deeper and richer than it looks now because the sun's coming in through my window so it's bleached it out a little bit. So I'm going to paint the mill. What I just did was use my three quarter inch flat brush and painted the mill body with clean water. This will help my um, burnt sienna to flow across that area, keep it diffusing. So it's as simple as that really. I'm just adding maybe in a few touches of burnt umber here and there, darkening up the roof, adding a bit of burnt umber uh, to the main body of the sails, nothing much really. I'm not looking for smooth, clean um, washes here. I want the transparency of this glaze over the Prussian blue that's already um, on the mill from the sky. And that just will help to give me some variation and the look of weathering. I'm quite happy with that for the mill. The mill now needs to dry off and then after it's dry I can remove the masking fluid. So again it's it's all dried back fully and so I'm using a little bit of masking tape and the adhesive on the tape I'm touching it onto the latex masking fluid and it's just pulling it off. You can use an eraser or your finger to rub off the little sticky patches of fluid and that's left me a nice clean um, unpainted paper just with a bit of ink work on it for my windows. This is a little bit of cadmium yellow, nice bright yellow. And I'm hoping that it will complement the bluey colors and the orangey colors um, that I've used so far in my painting. This is my small Chinese calligraphy brush. It's got a nice tiny point so I can make sure that I get into all those window panes. 
um, to give me this lovely glow of light coming from the mill. Just add another coat just to intensify that yellow a little bit more. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I really like the way it's turned out. So let's have a look at it and remove the tape and see it with its clean white border. It's a very simple scene. Um, it didn't take too long to, to paint. Um, I think it was about sort of half an hour in total, plus drying time. Um, but I think it works really nicely. The simplicity of the paint over the line work, which is a bit more complex, uh, but still simple, um, gives us quite, an, quite a good effect. Um, I do like line and wash because if you have got some some skills with drawing, then you can apply that to your painting and get your painting nicely structured first with your ink work and then go in with the washes. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, please um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.